Hello and welcome to the Fusion vs. PeopleSoft Purchase Requisition Comparison video. This video is intended for existing PeopleSoft e-procurement licensees looking for a comparison versus Fusion's Purchase Requisition application. Please note, Fusion is often referred to as Fusion Cloud applications or even Oracle Cloud within the marketplace. For the purposes of this conversation, they are one and the same. This video highlights the differences between Fusion's requisition functionality and PeopleSoft's requisition functionality. Okay, so there's six key comparison areas and they are as follows. Pre-negotiated content tools, non-negotiated content tools, ease of management of content tools, requisition transaction linkage and visibility, meaning more of the downstream transactions, linkage and visibility, intra application integration. So that's the integration amongst all of the different related applications. And in this case, requisitions. And then lastly, delivered reporting and analytics. So let's get started. First up, pre-negotiated content tools. So there are a lot of tools that exist both in PeopleSoft and Fusion. You see them highlighted here in the green bluish boxes. So shop by category, more tasks, which contain a lot of the requisition uh, forms, if you will. Manage requisitions is another one. Shopping lists, the idea of local catalogs, punch out, etc. However, there are two distinctions that exist in Fusion that do not exist in PeopleSoft. First is the idea of an informational catalog item, which is something that's more or less like a pointer. You can point to uh, third party portals like a Hertz rental car portal or other portals where you would use the portal and not necessarily use the fusion or any application internally requisition infrastructure, but you may have a contract, right? So you still have a negotiated piece of content but you don't necessarily use, in this case, Fusion. So you could use this info catalog, have it searched for, and then the requester could punch more or less uh, into this other portal and use that infrastructure. You could also point to anything that isn't a Fusion URL. So if we wanted to point to policy docs or a quick start guide, lots of helpful different websites, pages, URLs to point to. Uh, then the uh, obviously local catalog punch out, we talked a little bit about that. Those exist in both. But then this idea of a smart form. So PeopleSoft has express forms. However, it's a record definition, involves customization. And don't even get me started on displaying that tool to something else and securing it in terms of content to the requesters. Once you're in Fusion, you can easily create a smart form. So take the base 10, 15 fields that you'd have in a non-catalog request but because we may have an agreement. So let's say we have an agreement with an attorney. We will need some extra information as per that agreement, maybe the matter number that we're working with in some other fields. Well, we can create a smart form, capture that agreement and link it, excuse me, capture that information on the requisition and link it to an agreement, making it a pre-negotiated content pipe. So those are a couple different ways where Fusion outstrips PeopleSoft in terms of functionality related to pre-negotiated content. Next up, non-negotiated content tools. So here, similar idea in that we can easily create what they call flex fields and we can attach them to a requisition for a variety of different reasons. However, before you saw us talking about how to attach information to a construct that was self-service, meaning catalog on an agreement. This is not. This is when some requester wants to purchase something that's completely off contract. So you could want information from the requester that you need downstream. Is this going to be self-service? Is this going to go to a catalog? You could ask questions, for example, ask the requester to put the budgeted amount in their requisition line amount field but then create a custom field asking where sourcing effect will be asking the targeted amount. So they would understand how downstream to source or the target to source this or the end amount for this request. There's lots of different ways you see here. There's a listing of questions which were bound to different forms. Those different request forms you can see in the drop down under request type, change existing, request a new proposal, initiate a request for quote. Those are all the different request types. So they are not necessarily catalog or negotiated content, 
but they're how we structure the new request for something that hasn't been negotiated. Also under that idea, we can attach series of questions to a category. So whenever a requester goes to purchase from this particular category, we can ask for some additional data. Or like you see on the right, we can create a smart form, bind all those questions together on one form and expose that under that request form at the bottom. You saw it in the first slide under the content tools. So there are lots of different ways, both for pre-negotiated and for negotiated, excuse me, non-negotiated content where Fusion adds some additional functionality versus PeopleSoft's e-procurement requisition. Okay, so now that we've talked about these content tools, how easy are they to manage? Well, what you see here is, we'll call this a creating a catalog item. And so you can create something completely different that doesn't exist in PeopleSoft. In PeopleSoft, if you wanted to create an item, you needed to create it in a way that was like creating it for inventory. You had to define the item, you had to put the purchasing attributes, etc. In Fusion, that same functionality exists, they'll call it PIM, but you also have an easier, faster, lighter way to create what's called a definitional item, meaning you just create what is amounting to a procurement contract like you do in PeopleSoft, but it's called an agreement. And each of those lines can be exposed as items. So you see in step one, you create the BPA. In step two, you turn the BPA into a catalog. In step three, you expose the catalog to requesters. Very easy. All can be done by procurement as opposed to having been done by IT or a fintech team. So that's one of the easy ways to manage content in Fusion versus PeopleSoft. You also have this idea of a taxonomy. So PeopleSoft is famous for Tree Manager and creating kind of complex structures that aren't intuitive for somebody who isn't in IT. What's a leaf, a child node, a parent node? This doesn't really work for procurement to get involved. So what Fusion does is it creates a simple folder structure and you can put your catalog category hierarchy, your taxonomy in there. Once you create that taxonomy, you can see by the box on the left, excuse me, right, the left is the image of what it looks like. Those checkbox under feature make those easily appear in the requisition page, but you can also then create shop by taxonomy, a report by taxonomy. You can assign default account accounting by that taxonomy. This is a very big difference in terms of Fusion versus PeopleSoft. In PeopleSoft, your item category is your GL code. You must have them. In Fusion, it's completely different. You can assign GL codes either, again, by that item category, by a combination of that category and business unit for global settings with different tax accounting, or you could put unspec in there and pick the level two procurement category to assign all of your GL accounting. That'll be covered in a later video, but you get the idea. You also can default buyers by the same taxonomy. So the content is much more intuitive and easier to manage in Fusion versus PeopleSoft e-procurement. Next up, requisition transaction linkage and visibility. So in this case, there's some good and some bad. There are some cases like you can see here where PeopleSoft e-procurement does link to some of the transactions, but doesn't link to contracts, doesn't necessarily link to sourcing events. It's not in the line of life, if you will. When you get into Fusion, the page is maybe not as pretty, but it's much more functional. As you can see on the left, that's a requisition linking to a sourcing event and to an agreement. And so you can see the details of where that requisition is. On the right, that's a requisition linking to the order, to its shipments or ASNs that are inbound, to the receipts of those shipments and to invoices that show paid amounts. So everything that you need downstream is available and linked to the requisition or the requester so they can manage their, truly manage their transaction. Next, intra-application integration. So there's a lot of places and you'll hear it in all of the different comparison at the transaction level videos we create but there's a lot of places where the integration amongst applications is much tighter, if you will, or there's much more of it. We just chose a couple different areas. One that's, I believe, key 
In e-procurement, I can't see what's on the contract when I, the requester, am searching for items. Ergo, I don't really see true price. Versus when you're in Fusion, you can see here on the bottom, if I have price breaks, my agreement is attached to my item and my price is reflected in the item search for requesters. Additionally, on the top where it's internally orderable, there's a function that's sort of like this. It really is internally transferable, but I chose to use this to illustrate that I can use an available to promise type of functionality where my requester goes in, sees an item, sees the quantity for a given inventory and can create a material transfer or order from the supplier directly, very easily, all in one place, all within the requisition. So Fusion is different than people sought to procurement in that way as well. And lastly, delivered reporting. So the mantra in PeopleSoft was that fields are custom, your application can be changed, reporting is you, the customer's responsibility. And while there's still some of that, obviously, within any application as end uses of the application and needs for reporting will differ, there is a stock amount of reporting and data modeling available, as you can see here, and easy to put into play. There is a nicer UI on what to do with those queries. Once you present them, again, you can see the visuality here. There is OTBI in Fusion versus similar to what BI Publisher is in PeopleSoft. But then you also have this idea of OAX that sits on top of your Fusion data model. And so if I create the custom fields that I talked about earlier, and I put those fields into Fusion, by the click of a button, those field values will be transferred into OAC or the Oracle data store, if you will. And there's a program or a piece of functionality known as OAX that sits on top of that, where Oracle is giving spend reporting, key metrics, and additionally, or constantly releasing reporting and metrics. And it not only will automatically work on your fusion data, but if you send your DFF or your flex fields, those custom fields to the same repository, it will work on them as well because they're in the same or use the same data model. So that's a little bit about stock reporting. There's a ton more available out of the box within Fusion. And I haven't even talked about the overviews per transaction because requisitions don't really have that. But if you talk about qualifications, negotiations, a lot of the transaction reporting, they have complete pages that talk about what it is that you've created, what you need to see as the user or requester in this case, or the buyer. And so there's a tremendous amount of stock reporting and analytical capabilities in Fusion that don't exist or aren't delivered rather within PeopleSoft. So that's the end of this comparison. It's just a quick video, but those are six different points where we procured, compared PeopleSoft e-procurement Diffusion Cloud applications are what are also known as Oracle Cloud. Thank you for watching.